What's up guys, Matt with Prairie State Tractor. And today we're gonna go out and visit one of our customers who's got very exciting new John Deere technology and we wanna kinda of show it in action. So this customer has a Sea and Spray Ultimate John Deere equipped sprayer. I have not been up and close and personal with one of these before. So it's gonna be awesome to see uh, what it looks like, what the technology looks like, and actually how it runs and applies as it goes. So stick with me guys and we're gonna go check it out. This feels like a brunt kind of day. Now I gotta give Brunt a major shout out for sending these to me. I know I'm not really a real farmer, but this is kind of making me feel like one. All right, now we're ready to go. After that crazy long five minute drive, I think we found our target. My guy, yeah. finally meet you. Yeah. So you see me just chilling out there and uh, making a fool of myself? Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't have much uh, going on. I was just spraying no. a little strip there, but okay. we're gonna go down the road do another field. It's like Bradley showed up. So on this. We switch fields. We got tank one is our sea and spray tank, so that's coming out of the back nozzles. With the cameras, tank two is a broadcast. Um, make sure that's right. Uh, just got our totals page, so we got an 80 acre field. Um, these two totals are my tank one totals and tank two totals, even though they're in different counters. We got tank one, pump one. It's, it's two of everything, two booms, um, and yeah, it's a uh, lock on the auto pad here, and go for it. Hey, if I ever get in the way, just yell at me. Oh, no, move. you're good. <laughs> Twelve mile an hour. That is application rate of the sea and spray. It just paints a more visible picture than the weed pressure map. Mm -hmm. So that's why I use it. And then down here is my broadcast map. Just so I have two. I can tell what each of them is doing. Are you going to do a eager load here? Yes, sir. Yep. Oddball width here for along these poles. And then we have a straight adding that clears all the poles. So we're going to do that to run our tank out until we. I assume the little little pockets there where it's showing like a box or a square, that's what it's spraying. Yes. Or it just text weeds. Yep, so that is like all these weeds here. So it's gonna flare out and basically show a lot more broadcast. Um, until we run dry here in a second. And here we go, we are out. Hope Ruben's out there. Yeah, it looks like he is. Those squares are the nozzles kicking off, so it's the, the broadcasted patch from where the camera sees the weeds. And right now I'm set on medium, medium for my, when the camera sees a weed, it is like in about the middle position of length and width applied over said weed or weed area. Um, just because of the, if there was no wind today, I'd be on small, small. Um, but for today we widened them up a little bit so we have no misses and my spray sensitivity is the highest it can be so even if the 
it, it's basically going to spray everything even if it doesn't think it's something which i mean you're still typically under 50 percent applied of broadcast so that's a lot yeah so you probably don't have to fill up quite as much as uh, you used to before seeing spray we are filling up a lot because we have smaller tanks to make room for the tank i mean we're running 80 acre loads usually we'd be running 120 or uh sorry 100 acre loads so okay. it's it's a lot more stuff to do but you you're saving your actual product so i'm gonna watch these guys fill yeah. up here here with Bradley Wink. He's one of our precision ag experts. Uh, he's going to walk us through a little bit here on the, the boom, the technology that's on it, and uh, we'll get a little closer look. So, Hi, Brad. I'm ready. So what we got going on here, this sprayer is a 612R, so we've got a 1200 gallon tank split 750 and 450. So Matt had some video of these guys filling, uh, and they have everything stickered so they can make sure that they don't mix chemicals between those two tanks. Uh, this sand spray ultimate machine, we've got a 120 foot carbon fiber boom. So that carbon fiber boom makes it more rigid and it makes it a little lighter than a stainless steel or aluminum boom. This is one of our 36 cameras and processors to boot. Uh, with those 36 cameras, this 120 foot boom for any given instance uh, and make a decision on our target boom uh, in 200 milliseconds, which that is one blink of an eye. That's pretty insane, actually. Yeah, that is very, very, very impressive. With these 36 cameras, um, that is only for the targeted boom. So this machine has two separate boom systems with those one and two tanks. Uh, one of those, that number two tank, is your regular broadcast tank. Uh, so, if we see here, this machine has two separate solution tubes going down the whole length of the boom. Um, one of those, in this, in this case, uh, is using a residual herbicide, and then the targeted boom, which is ran by the cameras, is spraying a, a contact kill herbicide. It's not necessarily a typical setup for uh, so these adding the herbicide? Everything separated. Uh, so this is a Roundup Ready corn only. Uh, so what we've got here is two separate solution systems coming off the spray trailer, feeding into two separate systems on the sprayer. So these guys have it set up really nice so they can be very efficient with their fills, uh, and that makes them spray longer, cover more acres. It's Ruben? Yeah. Ruben, are you the drone guy? All right, check out this guy on Instagram. He's got some awesome drone footage. So we'll put the link to that somewhere in here. Turning your pressure circulation on once it agitates in the tank. You have on a field summary, you have fuel, your sea and spray area worked, your weed pressure, which I haven't found a great way to understand that metric yet. I guess it's 27% of the plants in the field are weeds. I'm okay, not sure. That makes sense. But then you got your totals for your sea and spray. So sprayer one, so tank one. Those are your metrics. This is just everything you have in it. And then tank two. Applied everything. So it's just, it's two of everything on your summaries. And I would say that's the most confusing when you get in one of these. Like just getting your totals nailed down to something you consistently understand and remember what you did um, yeah. for record keeping. So it essentially shows where you've already been. Yep, so that map shows where, and I'm, so on this map, I ran out. My broadcast, I ran out there, so, 
because it was already section controlled I'm gonna switch it to just the broadcast I'm gonna section control off and we're gonna recoat that red area just so we don't have any messes shut that back off we're gonna go in and we're going to go back to A plus B with B being C and spray ran by the cameras and you got both methods they're both in pulsing auto which it will not see and spray in pulsing but if it falls back to broadcast it will pulse and the Those all just went yellow because I went higher than 12 mile an hour. Now they're back to green. And these are yellow because of fallback mode, because of dust. Blue blips you're seeing on the screen when they come are the weeds. And that obviously is why the camera's freaking out because it can't see the weeds because of the dust, because they mounted the cameras behind the tires and thought it would be dust. So. so how often do you need to go back there and actually clean off the cameras? Um, like the ones behind the frame or in general? Just in general. Uh, I have cleaned them off maybe twice over a couple thousand acres. Oh, and okay. And it's not super bad. I mean, I've Basically, the only time I'm cleaning off, it's been so dry this year, the only time I'm cleaning off is if it got caught in a rainstorm or I pressure washed the windows off and splattered them. And I'm just like, yeah, I double check them. But really, they've stayed very clean. It's just the dust being in the way of them being able to see weeds because the cameras are behind the tires on the machine. I see. So it's more so just as you're running, the dust yep. is flying and not necessarily okay. sitting on the cameras itself. No, it's, uh, it is definitely not. Because I know that seems to be a lot of people's concerns. They keep asking about the cameras, like, the cameras get too dusty. The cameras uh, don't get dusty. The dust hanging out behind the tires, because there are cameras behind the machine traveling 12 mile an hour in a very dusty field, is the issue. We got an 80 surrounded by bean fields, so it's pretty critical to be mm -hmm. on your game with the boom. And like this, we just jumped a row over, so I'm hand steering so we don't hurt anything. Gotta be a good neighbor. That is key. So you can kind of see that, that pulsing action. You can tell the, the front boom is pulsing. Heard about 65% section flow on the Exact apply. Is this kind of the only map view, or are there multiple no, views? No, there's tons. At? So we got this is broadcasted rate um, with tank one. We have pressure obviously coming out of the nozzle, rate, which is what I'm seeing right now with the boxes, okay. and then this is weed pressure. So as you can see, it's pretty bland, which is good. It doesn't mean there's a lot of weeds, but it's not as easy to pick out where it's actually spraying as the rate map is. So like those are weeds. Yep, uh, sure. The scale is just green to red, weed pressure percentage. Um, it's, it's just hard to understand what's going on looking at a green map versus if you look at your what is being applied, you see every target, every chunk of the map that it's spraying. This is the diagnostics of all the cameras. So there are nine, nine modules. The sixth one is like the master module. And then you have four cameras under each um, Emirates processor, not module. But then you got all yeah. the cameras and you can basically look at what the camera is seeing and you can cycle through the cameras you got the tire there so this is the see and spray run page fallback mode if the camera is unsure of what it's seeing it can either fall back into broadcast and just blanket spray 
on that camera segment the nozzles that that camera controls um, or it can shut off and if you have 100% trust in the cameras and you're spraying something that's dinging the crop like full rate of something that you don't want to just blast on the crop but you're using NC and spray because you you know pinpoint the weeds um, you're gonna have that in off if it's not very dusty but because it's just roundup that's anytime the camera's unsure it's gonna spray broadcast my spray sensitivity is the highest it is this is how many nozzles are spraying the weed so if you get a large it's gonna spray you know roughly 10 inches wide 16 inches long um, the zero and six I don't those are guesstimates but a lot of times in some wind I'll run medium I guess crazy winds will run large but you don't want to run in crazy wind so you try to avoid that yeah but if there's no wind I'll run small small and you'll you know it'll be three nozzles at a minimum instead of four nozzles and we are running 60 degree 60 degree t-jet nozzles right now have you seen any great savings on chemical cost as a result of having sand spray um, there is savings in volume of products because you're not just blanking and applying roundup isn't the most expensive thing in the world but talk about a liberty or some of the more expensive passes out there like that's huge but i mean yeah. say around the pass is i'm not even sure actual numbers maybe like seven bucks an acre or something for roundup it's like i mean right now you're at uh, on this field alone you're at 27 percent of broadcasted so i mean that's 27% of what broadcast would be, so yeah, that's savings. Yeah, it all adds up. The more you cover, too, the more savings. Yeah, I mean, you're still paying deer. Is that a public number yet? Uh, I don't know. The 20,000 acre guy is going to pay for it or be able to afford it a lot faster than the 2,000 acre guy. But if they're both paying per acre, it levels the playing field. So that was their yeah. I think reasoning. it. I think it makes it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. Um, just paying for what you use. So that's. I mean, pretty soon you're going to be paying for the heated seats in your car on a monthly basis. So, Didn't BMW already come out with oh something yeah. like that? I mean, it's it's everyone's trending that way. Yeah. So. It's just like our receiver subscriptions and everything. Yeah. Going from the 2630s, that you'd have one with all the unlocks for who knows how much money, and then you got the you know just the guidance unlock one. It's like what, three grand. Like, yeah, it seems like the yeah it seems like the days with that, SF7, yeah, with the days of mobile. staying the days of staying the unlock staying with the monitor are gone. Which I'm a fan of that just because you're not stuck. You know, you know upgrade technology exactly. potentially faster, but, but they can keep adding. Yeah up charges on that yearly well, subscription. <laughs> yeah, there's upside and there's uh, downside to it. I can see both sides of the equation, so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, uh, this is the first machine we're running with SFRTK. Um, we haven't had, I have not had any issues with it. It's working. It's for the most part that I can tell it is lining up very well with our radio RTK towers or our boundaries and stuff. Um, I haven't had an issue with it, so I'm really impressed with that. No there you more. go, John Deere. Having two systems allows you to essentially have two sprayers in one. And if you're if you can't over if you can't spray the line with a product because you'll it doesn't agree with the next crop over, you can shut that system off and spray your roundup on the line and not have the issue of having everything combined in one tank so that is as you get used to having two systems on the sprayer and two different products
you can play with it and make it fit a lot of scenarios that you never had before. Like, you got a bunch of giant rags on the line, and you're both corn, you're both Roundup ready. You can basically clean that up and not have weedy fence rows. So, super, super um, handy, but also um, picking the right boom and letting the monitor adjust itself because there's a lot of things going on in this monitor and let me tell you it's it has some harebrained ideas at times and you gotta just key cycle it but it will get better it's just part of the uh, part of the it's learning the, curve it's the uh, early adoption yeah, you're on the bleeding edge. evolution. You don't here. want to be on the bleeding edge, but we're definitely on the bleeding edge. It will evolve over time. But it is, I mean, it sounds like it's, a, it's working really well for you guys. Yeah. Other than a few it, honestly, common Honestly, it is. But. It is. There are things that are annoying, but there are things that it is doing flawlessly. Um, but yeah, there's some glitches that's to be expected. <laughs> we're done. On this field, we sprayed 27% of the area applied with Roundup. So you can do the math on that. But, uh, I don't know if I can. I'd have to calculate it later. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> it's 27% of the applied. So yeah. I mean, whatever your Say you have an 80 and that's what you spray, you figure your product cost and you decide, what, I mean, I would say this is a fairly average uh, percentage for us, being that I have the nozzle, like they say, if I had it set off small, small, it may be 24%, mm -hmm. just because that is the, the squares that you're seeing. It's not like it's just laser zapping the weed. It's spraying two to three to four to five nozzles, depending on what weeds it sees, and depending on how wide your area of coverage is when the camera does see a weed. So, it's kind of a good middle ground you know, to not miss the weeds if they're off target spraying. Brad, get out of the way. What do you guys, what do you guys call Bradley? Does he have a nickname? Big Bird. <laughs> That's hard. Bro. I mean, he looks like Big Bird with that yellow shirt. <laughs> Come on, Brad. Complete. On to the next spot. Yes, sir. See you, Big Bird. Thank you for your time. Yep. Good, sir. And uh, since you're so good at this, I might have to hit you up again. There you go. But let's get some uh, drone footage and get out of here. Thanks, man.